Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to see how practical the Laplace transform can be for an example problem like this. Now we have a simple spring with spring constant k, a mass suspended from the spring, and now if the only force acting on it would be gravity, then we could simply take this driving force away, and then the object would simply be oscillated back and forth, and then this would be the equation we would need to solve. And then for that, we would not need the Laplace transform. It's easy enough to do it in other methods. But if we have a driving function where the force applied to this mass as a function of time is equal to some constant times the sine of omega t, that's a whole different story. What we need to do now is transform our homogeneous differential equation to a non-homogeneous differential equation. Now also realize that the quantity k over m is equal to omega sub naught squared. It's by definition the frequency of the system when there's no driving force. But then there's a driving force which is dependent upon omega t where this omega is a different frequency than the natural frequency of the system if it was not driven for the homogeneous part of the equation. Also notice we have some initial conditions but they're equal to zero, make the problem a little bit easier. And so now we go ahead and try to solve this problem using the Laplace transform. So it's called the undamped system with a spring. Well, the first thing we want to do is take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. When we do that, we get the following. We get S squared times the Laplace transform of the function minus S times Y evaluated zero and then minus Y prime evaluated zero. But right away we'll realize that these two terms will go to zero because of the initial conditions right over there. Then we take the Laplace transform of that, so we get plus omega sub naught squared times the Laplace transform of y is equal to, well that's a constant, f sub naught times the Laplace transform of the sine of omega t. All right, realize then that these two terms are zero, so we can factor out a Laplace transform of y, we can get the following. So the Laplace transform of the function y times what's left, which is an s squared plus omega sub naught squared, is equal to f sub naught times the Laplace transform of sine of omega t, which is omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. Now moving this over to the other side, we get the following. We get the Laplace transform of y is equal to the constant f sub naught times the quantity omega times s squared plus omega squared times 1 over s squared plus omega sub naught squared. And then realizing that we're going to have to take the inverse Laplace transform, and this is almost in the right form, what we need to do is multiply this times omega sub naught. So let's go ahead and do that. Omega sub naught, that's a constant. Remember, omega sub naught, let me write it out so that we know omega sub naught is equal to the square root of k over m. And so we multiply this times omega sub naught, so we have to divide this by omega sub naught here, so this is simply still a constant. Now we want to take the inverse Laplace transform, because when we do that, we can solve for y. But then we realize we have a product here, so we can write that as a sum. So this can be written as still the constant f sub naught over omega sub naught times, well, this would be a s plus b over s squared plus omega squared plus, instead of, instead of multiplied, times c s plus d over s squared plus omega sub naught squared. So what we need to do here is solve for the constants a, b, c, and d. All right, let's see here. Notice that these two fractions added together should equal this product right here. Now if we multiply both sides of the equation by s squared plus omega squared times s squared plus omega sub naught squared, then the denominators will disappear and we'll have the following. We can say from that, that omega times omega sub naught will be equal to a s plus b times the denominator of the other fraction, which is s squared plus omega sub naught squared plus c s plus d 
multiply it times the denominator of the first fraction, which is s squared plus omega squared. So notice the right side must now be equal to the left side, and that's how we find a, b, c, and d. Well, first of all, let's go for the s cubed terms. If we multiply a s times s squared, we get a s cubed. We multiply c s times s squared, we get c s cubed, which means that 0, because there's no s cubed on the left side, is equal to a plus c times s cubed, which means that 0 is equal to a plus c, or a is equal to minus c. Next, we can go for the s squared term. So multiply, uh, let's see here, this times this, and this times this, we get 0 is equal to b plus d times s squared, which means 0 equals b plus d, b is equal to minus d. So next, we need to go for the s term. So multiplying this times this, plus this times this, I get the following. Since there's no s term on the left side, I get 0 is equal to a omega sub naught squared plus c times omega squared multiplied times s. So that means that this equals 0. So we have a omega sub naught squared plus c omega squared is equal to 0. But then remember up here that a was equal to minus c which means I can replace c by minus a, for example, or I can say that a omega sub naught squared minus a omega squared is equal to zero. Now, since omega sub naught and omega are two different constants, and I'm multiplying both of them times a and subtracting, the only way to get zero is if a was equal to zero, because if a is not equal to zero, then there's no way that this minus this can equal zero. Therefore, I can conclude that a must be equal to zero, and if a is zero, then c must equal zero as well. So at this point, we found the values for a and c. Finally, for the last term, the constant term, I can say that the product omega times omega sub naught must equal b times omega sub naught squared plus d times omega, omega squared, b times omega squared, Oop, this should be d, not b. And since b is equal to minus d, I can replace d by minus b. So I can write that omega times omega sub naught equals b omega sub naught squared minus b times omega squared. And then I can solve this for b. Factor out of b, divide both sides by what's left. I can then say that b must equal omega times omega sub naught divided by omega sub naught squared minus omega squared. So now I have a value for b, and if d is minus b, then I can simply say that d is equal to minus omega times omega sub naught divided by omega sub naught squared minus omega squared. So I have a value for d as well. a and c are 0, b and d are these two values which means I can now plug those into my equation right here that then allows me to find the, hmm, what we call the inverse Laplace transform. So this can now be written as f sub naught divided by omega sub naught times, of course, a is zero, b is equal to this quantity right here, which means it's equal to omega times omega sub naught divided by the quantity right here, which is omega sub naught squared minus omega squared times the quantity here, which is s squared plus omega squared. And then plus, remember c is zero, but d is the negative of that. So let's turn this into a negative. Omega times omega sub naught divided by, we have omega sub naught squared minus omega squared, and multiply that times s squared plus omega sub naught squared. All right. Well, that was a lot of work to get the coefficients, but believe me, if you tried to do the conv convolution here, it would even be a lot more difficult and take a lot more time because the integrals look pretty ugly. This was the easiest way to do it. Now we need to take the inverse Laplace transform. So we can say now that y, the function we're looking for, and notice we're not really looking for y, we're looking for, hmm, let's see here, 
Yeah, we're looking for y. Okay, there we go, because we have f sub naught and omega sub naught. So y is equal to the inverse Laplace transform of, and I'll go dot, 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 because it's, this whole quantity will go in here. I'm running out of board space, so if I take this whole thing and put it in here and take the inverse Laplace transform, what do I get? Well, notice I will have an f sub naught and an omega sub naught, which I can factor out, and I have 1 over omega sub naught squared minus omega squared, which can be factored out as well. Remember that omega and omega sub naught are constants. So this will be equal to f sub naught divided by omega sub naught times omega sub naught squared minus omega squared. And what else do I have? Well, notice I have an omega divided by this, which will give us the Laplace transform of that will be the sine of omega t. And I have an omega sub naught divided by this will give me the sine of omega sub naught t. However, I also have, if I take the inverse Laplace transform of this, I have an omega sub naught left, so I'll put down omega sub naught times the sine of omega times t minus, and here I have an omega left, so an omega uh, times the sine of omega sub naught t. So that's the Laplace transform of both sides when I factor out the omega sub naught squared minus omega squared. Remember, I have an f sub naught omega sub naught, and then I have to take, hmm, let's see, I can simplify it a little bit more by dividing both sides here, by dividing this, well, actually by taking this and moving it inward, canceling it out, I can then say that y is a function of time is equal to f sub naught divided by omega sub naught squared minus omega squared times, divide this into that, I get the sine of omega t minus omega divided by omega sub naught. Well, that's a, not a very good looking omega. There we go, better, times the sine of omega sub naught t. And that is ultimately the solution we were looking for. Remember, what we're trying to do is find the solution that tells us the position of the mass at any point in time, which is y of t, and it's defined by this equation right here. Notice that omega sub naught is the square root of k over m, which is the spring constant divided by the mass. Notice that omega is equal to the frequency of the driving function, and there is the solution of this equation. And without the Laplace transform, that would be a rather difficult problem to solve. And there it is. That's how we do it.